All right, guys, welcome back to another video here on Unplugged TV. This time with an uncut road trip video, maybe. I'm not sure if I will cut it or not. We all have so much time now. This is actually my first drive since last week. So I haven't driven the Tesla Lander for a week now. We are still in lockdown. I'm working from home for the last two weeks. Haven't moved the car much. I hope the picture is okay. Yep, picture looks good. You can see everything. We are going for a drive to, oh, let's see if we can. Drive to Bunnings Ipswich. Ah, that's actually the wrong one. That's the wrong one. <laughs> Drive to Bunnings North Ipswich. Ah. Ah. Bundamba it is. That's the one. Cool. Works. Alright, 51 kilometer trip. And I've got 213 kilometers, which is exactly 57.6% uh, instead of charge. So, as always, I have charged the car to 60% overnight. I wasn't planning to go to go um, to uh, Bunnings today. Bunnings is our hardware store if you're not from Australia. So I need to return some goods and buy some other stuff. Oh, someone is making a fire. Heaps of smoke. And they are open until 7 p.m. today. And we've got a uh, quarter past four now, so plenty of time. Should be there by close to five o'clock. I'll take my time as always. I've got so much time now, it's unbelievable. And we are now running on software version 2020.12.5, which has downloaded last week, or the week before actually. And I had no chance to test it because we went into lockdown and working from home straight afterwards. I went to the shops, to the local shops here once, and that's pretty much it. coming so let the car drive in autopilot as much as possible uh, many people have um, written on the internet that the new version 12.5 the autopilot would have improved a lot so I will test it today I guess so as you can see the blue steering wheel here shows us we are in autopilot so the car accelerates, brakes and steers just by itself. I'll keep my hand on the steering wheel as always. Safety first, just in case I need to step in. And we've got a 26 degree in the battery. And 32 in the motor. So what we will see is on the highway then uh, the battery temperature will increase not while we are driving just from that but also it will divert the heat from the electric motor into the battery pack as well to heat up the battery to about 30 31 degrees and then this um, artificial heating will stop but the battery will keep uh, warming up itself because of we are, yeah, while we are driving on the highway. Four millivolt is our cell imbalancing, it's called. It's an imbalance. Ah, phantom braking. 
I had this here before so this hasn't changed this is going uphill when the camera is pointing a little bit uphill and there's a car coming towards us then we have phantom braking but I didn't interfere in this case there's nothing nothing here when we go downhill or follow another car can handle that but going uphill and a car comes towards us phantom braking I had this before with this software version okay I'm not doing anything now yeah, it's accelerating now and as you can see we don't have any visualization here for the traffic lights in Australia at all now enter the roundabout and take the first still exit. nothing no self-driving preview okay this is the on-ramp still 60 here and the 100 kilometer sign comes here there we go nice and soft acceleration All right. zoom in Show map. Yeah, nah, um, turn off satellite view. Satellite visual visualization is on. Uh, I don't want to turn it on. I don't want to show street map. Ah, there you go. So you can see a little bit better. There another phantom braking, just for a moment. I have to turn it down manually. We are not. That's better. Okay. There's 80 kilometers coming. This is new for a couple of months now, and the car doesn't know about it. See, it's still on 100. Fuel price is 97 cents per liter. Very cheap at the moment. But because everyone is in lockdown, they can't go anywhere. Still 80 kilometers here. Car shows 100. Map data hasn't been updated. Um, yeah, 2019, 24 it is for the map data okay going back to 100 I followed some discussions on the forums this morning about the premium connectivity where you have the satellite view and the traffic visualization in here and streaming services for Netflix, YouTube and music streaming services. Uh, what else was in the premium? Well, that's about it. Um, they're talking about $16.99 here in Australia per month for this connectivity starting in mid of May next month 
So I know it's about, uh, or it's exactly $10 a month in the US and they charge us here $16.99 per month, Australian. I know the Australian dollar is weak at the moment, but is it that weak? Does it really cost them that much money? I don't know. I was expecting like $14.99 or something, $15 a month, but $17, that's $203 a year just for a convenience feature. Yeah, it's a convenience feature, you know, you don't need it. You can easily live with this view, it does all the navigation, it takes the traffic, uh, it is traffic aware. So if there is a um, congestion somewhere, it it will suggest you to take another route as you have set it up in your settings. You don't have the satellite view, of course, and you don't get the traffic uh, visualization either. Well, I could stream over my phone, you know, you can connect your car to your, you can hotspot it with your mobile phone, which doesn't cost me anything more. I've got a data plan on there, which heaps of gigabyte, which I don't use per month anyway. Um, and then I could stream while driving from the mobile phone again. So nothing would change in this perspective. I would lose the satellite view, but, well, not too much of a deal it is nice to have if you are in an area which you don't know and you can zoom in you can see buildings and parks and car parks whatever um, um, shopping malls this kind of, of stuff you know but um, well it's not it's not too much of a deal if you don't have it So we have driven 15.3 kilometers and 146 watt hours per kilometer so far. So this will go this will go down. Going up this mountain here as you can see. can see the truck already if you do the three finger swipe you can move forward a little bit the truck is doing 100 as well are we coming closer now we six seconds yeah the distance you can set with the right knob on the steering wheel this is not car length, these are seconds. So this is exactly when the car in front of you leaves a certain point on the road. It takes exactly this amount of seconds until you leave this point on the road. So it is actually um, speed I'm aware. So the slower you drive, hang on, I need to still 100 it's 80 here now it goes down to 80 but it still drives 100 now that's not good yeah so it always keeps this five seconds distance between the car in front of you and your your car regardless how fast you drive uh, if you have the uh, like other cars they have car lengths to set and then it depends how fast you drive you know if you drive in a city you want to get a little bit closer to the car in front of you so you go uh, maybe to two or three car lengths or maybe even one depending let's see 100 100 but it still drives 80 interesting there's no traffic awareness uh, no speed awareness anymore now that's annoying that sucks totally sucks 
Yeah, and with the distance, if you drive on a highway, you want to have a larger distance because your speed is higher. You don't need to do anything in the Tesla because this is seconds. It always keeps the seconds distance to the front car. So even in uh, city traffic, you can still have it sit on seven, which is the maximum, and it keeps seven seconds distance to the front car. I'll show you the dog for a moment here, so you can see the numbers. Oops, touch something. <laughs> car will brake automatically because the truck drives slower than we do. That's fine, I don't want to overtake him. You can see that the um, battery inlet now, the water inlet into the battery pack is 29, but the battery itself is only on 27. So the car uses now heat from the electric motor in the back and diverts it into the battery to heat up the battery to about 30%, uh, 30 degrees. And this is actually something... Oh, I turned on the seat heater while I was putting the mobile phone on here. I could feel straight away, I said, what's going on here? <laughs> it gets so hot in my bum. <laughs> I must have touched it. <laughs> Woo. That fires! Tell you that! <laughs> yeah, I think this is a very unique system uh, because the Model X and Model S they've got battery heaters as well but they're using electricity from the from the battery to heat the battery while this one here can divert heat from the electric motor cooling system and back into the battery what it cannot do is using this heat to heat the cabin. Yeah, it can only heat the battery, but not the cabin. If you heat the cabin inside the Model 3, it always uses the electric heater. This is a bit different to the Model Y now. Model Y has a heat pump and um, it uses actually the heat of the electric motor to feed the heat pump because the heat pump wants hot water. And then it extracts the energy out of this hot water and creates cold water on the other side. But it needs a certain temperature to do that. And if it gets too cold, like under 5 degrees Celsius, the heat pump is not very efficient anymore. Unless you feed it with hot water from the electric motor system. So this is another advanced step the Tesla engineers have put into these cars quite amazing to come up <laughs> come up with this with this idea it's insane it's the 127 now going uphill and then downhill again I think we are going down to 115 until we are there at the hardware store One percent now, state of charge. This is my sun shield, it's rattling here. Now it's the sucker, the Chinese sucker made some noise. I hope the picture didn't get unstable, shaky. Yeah, I think this is pr pretty good view now with the camera. I've got a bit of a fish eye lens on the left and right now, but that's fine. At least you can see the full windscreen. It tells me now my uh, nominal full pack in the battery is 50.4 kilowatt hours. So it has dropped 0.3 kilowatt hours. That's the state of health 
we still have in the uh, in the battery. Um, I still don't know exactly how this is being calculated or how this all works because the car um, the car's battery is 54 kilowatt hours all in total and then we've got a 2.3 kilowatt hour energy buffer which you never can use well this is now this, this is not true the energy buffer is when you drive the car down to zero kilometers you still have 2.3 kilowatt hours in the battery so about uh, 5% a bit more than 5% um, and then there's an additional uh, prick protection buff uh, buffer which is another 5% or so in the battery which you can never ever use so even if you drive the car down to zero zero kilometers and it stops driving you still have this buffer not available but in the battery so it never depletes the battery to a zero percent this is just to protect the the chemical structure of the cells you know and this is about five percent as well so 2.5 and 2.3 it's about four about five kilowatt hours on on buffers and if we take this away from f um, 54 we should be down to 50 but it shows me 50.4 so I'm not quite sure that would mean we don't have any degradation at all in the car we have now 11,000 lifetime almost uh, 12,000 kilometers on the clock so not exactly sure can actually show this one here it's the same at the moment not exactly sure how to uh, how to read these numbers 50.4 kilowatt hours on the nominal full pack so we have driven 30 kilometers now and got another 20 kilometers to drive and we are down to 50.1% state of charge. I could have, well, I could have charged the car up a little bit more. It wasn't 60%, roughly. But you know, if I drive in 100 kilometers, I still got another 100, yeah, 110 kilometers or something in the battery, so still good. Yeah, heaps of discussions on the forums if people should buy the um, long range or the standard range plus. In terms of battery, in terms of range. And most people say go for the long range, got the bigger battery, 450, 500 kilometers range. But well, you're paying a lot of more money you know you get a third you're getting a, an additional motor you get a bigger battery more range more capacity in the battery you're getting premium interior connectivity which you have to pay for it after a year anyway um, so I'm not sure if it's worth spending the money everything else is pretty much the same This car leaves now, disappears, and the test lander is speeding up to 100 again. Okay, let's say let's see if we enter the next 80 kilometer zone, if it slows down by itself now. comes 80 kilometers still shows 180 but it keeps driving 100 ah, that is so annoying okay I'll take off autopilot and okay set this one to 80 and see if it speeds up when we get back to 100 
Yeah, well, 80 is not for everyone. Ninety one point nine here on this service station. Come on, Chinese sucker. Still eighty kilometers. Forty-nine percent, forty-nine point three. Just want to go back to the battery temperature. Twenty-nine, we are on, and thirty point five is the inlet, so it tapers off slowly. Okay, so there's no car behind me, and here is one hundred kilometers per hour sign. Let's see the recognition here of that. 100 drives 80. It doesn't react to these um, speed limits and signs anymore. <coughs> oh, that's annoying. Okay, we have to um, watch this on our way back again. Because usually, if you drive 100 like now and then you come into an 80 zone and the car recognizes that, it slows down to 80. And if you go back to 100, it's, it speeds up to 100 kilometers an hour again afterwards. So it does this all by itself, but I've never seen this behavior before. It doesn't react at all. It recognizes the actual speed, but it doesn't react it anymore. Is this the update or is this another bug? There's a radar camera here and they're driving with 88. They're so freaking scared. Well, and now they're speeding up again. Oh, jeez, I hope they wanna leave now. At least this car does. This one was the slow poke here. Yeah, nee. Okay. Last week the uh, price for the Tesla Model 3 has increased in Australia by about $6,000 because of the weak Australian dollar. Dirty diesel Golf, 2 liter. Yeah, that's really bad. So. All of a sudden, my car is $6,000 more worth now. <laughs> That's insane. Ah, is he going to raise me? The green pea, ah, they are maybe a little bit careful. Maybe not. Now still, as you can see, I haven't bought full self-driving either. Even the prices, or the price for it, may increase to ten or even twelve thousand dollars now, which makes it even less worth buying, I would say. 
because full self-driving doesn't give you any benefit yes it does the navigate on autopilot on the highway like we're driving now but in my personal case I would have no benefit from from that at all it would overtake slower vehicles by itself it takes care of the traffic that's blinker goes in the other lane overtakes and then goes back in the other lane sometimes it does <laughs> but I mean I don't know if it's really worth spending so much money on full self-driving just to have this one feature yeah I know you get you get self parking as well well I would not use this feature at all there's no there's no, I I don't know any car park where I would use self-parking I don't park next to the street somewhere you know where I park at work it's a closed car park or public car park and with wide spaces so I don't know and then we've got this ultra gimmick summon I mean this this is really nothing nothing I would use there was a blue model 3 waving summon I would not use at all I would not go to a supermarket car park and let the car summon as long as other people other cars the Chinese sucker <laughs> The Chinese sucker! There you go. I got you covered. Are you alright? I hope you didn't hurt yourself. <laughs> Fell off again. Yeah, I would I would never summon the car in a busy or in a in a use in a in a in a normal car park where other people and cars are. I would not do that. Not with this current software version. I mean you can watch all these videos online when people summon their cars it's not a big deal you know it's not like the car has super magic forces now or something you know I'll let this truck out I know some of you guys have very narrow garage or carports or car spaces where someone is a good feature to summon in and out the car but really would you go in such a narrow car space anyway I mean at home yes but public I would look somewhere else then if it's that narrow that I cannot get out anymore I would not park oh, I have to leave here I would not park in this car space then really not I would far too to be scared to have making a scratch or something on the door, you know. All right, so let's see. Take the third exit. I know. I need to turn right here. In 200 meters, enter the roundabout. And I'll take it very exit. slow in these roundabouts. Very, very slow. Protect my tires. Okay, turn it back. Oh, it's another roundabout. Okay, now well, this doesn't work. Oh, come on. No, doesn't want to do it. Here we go. There we go. Autopilot. in the city I keep my hands on the steering wheel you never know this is 60 correctly adapted okay whoa disengaged autopilot on top of this little bridge now oh I didn't do anything what now break hard ah because I still it disengaged autopilot but the cruise control is still on 
That's why I braked hard just now. Ah. Braked itself. Because usually if, if it does an emergency braking, it um, beeps at you first before it breaks. So it gives you time to react. Okay, this is 70 here, that's fine. Well, this shouldn't be a problem and then we are already there. On our way back we can go another route to drive a little bit more in the city here. Well, it's 22 degrees only outside. It's fairly chilly today. 91.9 Takeaway has still open. All the other little shops are all closed. Everything is closed. Hardware store is still open. Bottle shops have open. Grocery stores, of course. Oh, it feels so good to drive the car again after a week. It just went to the shops last week and then I drove it, didn't drive it for another week before that. So that's my second drive in two weeks time now. And I decided today is the day you have to go to the hardware store and give back these um, items. So it's 60 now. 60 but it drives 70. It keeps driving 70. It's not adapting anymore. What the heck is going on, huh? I'm 110% sure it has done this before. In 300 meters, turn right onto Virgin. Can someone confirm this is not working anymore? Maybe it works on our way back when we did a restart of the car. store <laughs> Wow Mitsubishi ASX huh? oh, well. Be the perfect electric car SUV. Okay, so we are down to 45.9 percent. We have it was 12 percent or so, yeah, 12, 57, 11 percent. Battery is at 30, and battery inlet is at 30 as well. So it's not heating up the battery anymore. There's a five-way valve in the car which can divert the heat in different directions. And the uh, Tesla watchdog actually shows you the position of the valve as well. But I don't know which position does what, so I would need to watch that and see what's Monitor actually going on. I'm, I'm already here, thanks. Drive northwest on Mining Street for 50 meters. Okay. Let's find a car space far, far away. On the left. I'm already here, babe. Go. All 
Alrighty. Okay, I'll turn off the camera now and um, I should be back in 10. Well, you won't feel it. Now, actually, let's do something else. Um, I don't want to have the camera running again when I go home. Well, I will have, but this will be in a different video then. So I don't want to make the video. This was already like 45 minutes or something now. Don't want to make the video 90 minutes. I know we've got time, but you know, we don't want to overdo it. So we make a two part video out of that. That's the first part. And um, well, see you in the next part. Stay charged, stay safe and see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.